Good morning, Shabbat Shalom. With Shavuot in just a few hours, our thoughts are perhaps in many places, but for this moment, let us just be here and consider this new beginning. We come to the book of Numbers, Bamidbar, and it's really worth knowing the names in English and Hebrew because sometimes they have something really quite wonderful to suggest. And I was delighted to come across this teaching by Rabbi Dorothy Richman, who I understand is now helping out quite ably and uh, inspirationally over at Beth Shalom. So, a local rabbi. And I was pleased to find some lovely teachings by women rabbis, particularly this week. As I mentioned earlier, we are marking the 50th anniversary of the first female rabbi to be ordained in the United States through Hebrew Union College in 1972. Rabbi Sally Prezand is still quite hale and hearty, thank goodness. Rabbi Richman notes that the words bamidbar and numbers are really not the same word. Numbers means numbers. And bamidbar generally is translated as in the wilderness. It's worth noting that because both can be seen as integral to the message of this parsha. Numbers was chosen as the book's English title because of the census taking that occurs as its beginning. In the opening chapter, the people are counted in preparation for war. Counting the people, particularly the men, is a move towards stability and order. Each clan is named, given a place in the camp, and reckoned. This counting, this numbering, signifies human action and organization. Its purpose is for communal protection. The traveling Israelite camp must be secured and armed to protect itself. Numbers tells the story of control and the need for security. But Bamidbar, in the wilderness, suggests the opposite. The wilderness signifies chaos, disorder. The very definition of a wilderness is that it is untamed. It's also, though, a connoting of a kind of interim space, a knowing where you want to go and not yet being there kind of transformation. It was that kind of wilderness, it's not the first time we hear the word wilderness, certainly, that God sent Abraham on his revolutionary journey, telling him that his descendants would be a blessing to the families of the earth, but he had to go away from the place he knew toward one he would be shown. In the wilderness, Bamidbar suggests the situation of the people. They are escaped Egyptian slaves moving toward physical and spiritual freedom. The roundabout detour in the wilderness gives an opportunity for the Israelites to learn how to be a blessing in the world. And they learn it very often the hard way. But there's another census in our Torah portion, accounting at the portion's end, where we read today. The first, the military census, focused on the physical security. But the second, the counting of the Levites, that provides for the carrying of the tent of meeting, the place where God will continue revelation throughout the wilderness years. The second numbering, the second census says, how can we move the Torah forward? How can we travel with it into a strange, new, and difficult land? The the in-the-wilderness counting is not on physical security, but on spiritual progress. But maybe we need both. We need to take care of detail to make sure that things are counted right that we have security of some kind, even as we walk in a wilderness of instability and uncertainty. And so I'd like to share with you just a little bit of the story of Rachel Strugatsky, a woman in our very moment in time 
who is taking care of business, making her days count, powerful as we come to the end of the Omer, even as she lives in a wilderness and has chosen to stay in it and do God's work. Rachel Strugatsky is Ukrainian, and her family made Aliyah when she was young. She has moved back and forth between Ukraine and Israel. She is a nurse and a teacher, and she is currently in Kyiv at the Brodsky Synagogue. Hers is the only family in her congregation that remains with no plans to leave in Kyiv. She says, why am I here? And my answer is so that Kyiv Jews who escaped have something to return to. She has been working primarily at this time as a nurse, treating casualties of war, though she became a teacher in a Jewish day school during her years in Israel. She has been back and forth a number of times. She tends to the wounds of civilians and soldiers, makes sure the elderly get blood pressure medication, and she feeds anyone who shows up hungry, Jews and non-Jews alike. The path she beat between Israel and Ukraine led her to where she needs to be right now, she said. The Russian army has flattened much of eastern Ukraine, where she was raised. But from the relative safety of the capital, she still takes account of tremendous loss, and what she said can never be lost. We were liberated from everything that we loved, that we cherished, from the possibility of seeing relatives, from not being able to even visit the graves of loved ones, she said of the Russian onslaught. But what matters the most is what they didn't liberate us from, our faith. Rachel's story is remarkable. I invite you to take a look at more of the detail of it. A beautiful woman living in this wilderness, but doing what she needs to do to feed people to tend people, she convinced a bakery to stay open for her all night to bake hamantaschen on Purim and put them in baskets and bags that were delivered to anyone they could find who needed Purim cheer. She's a remarkable woman. She could have so easily fled back to Israel, where she is, of course, a citizen, she is overseeing, though, not only health care at the synagogue, but its programs to feed hungry Ukrainians. And her husband is helping by organizing supplies and delivering food. On Shabbat, she cooks in the synagogue's kitchen for her own family and for people she never met. She says, war has made her miss small and big things, the trips to the hair salon, and the luxury of dreaming about the future. But the most painful loss, she said, was the brief removal of the Torah scrolls from the Brodsky Synagogue. For three weeks after the war began, they were gone. They were taken to what they thought would be a safer location, but they are back now. They had gone into their own wilderness. But Rachel and her family have kept, quote, crunching the numbers, doing what needs to be done to make sure that something beautiful and good and right is happening even in the wilderness that is Ukraine. She stays, she said, to be one of those people who will ensure that Jewish life will endure and refers to a phrase Ukrainians began saying at the inception of the war to reassure one another. It translates to, Everything will be Ukraine. This lovely piece that was written about her ended with a quote from Rachel who says, I wholeheartedly believe in a bright future for Ukraine. How easy it is to get lost in the detail, 
to count the numbers and see that maybe they don't add up the way we'd like them to, to feel that we wander in a wilderness whose end we cannot see. But the rabbis of the Midrash note that the Torah was not given in Egypt, nor in the Promised Land. It was given in the wilderness. The Midrash Mechil Tashmot says, they camped in the wilderness, and Torah was given publicly and freely in a place belonging to no one. And all who want to receive and accept it can come and do so. To three things the Torah is likened, to the desert, to fire, and to water. This is to remind us that just as these three things are free to all who come into the world, so also are the words of the Torah free to all who come into the world. Would that water was free and abundant. We seem to have plenty of fire. And it certainly does feel like we wander in a wilderness. But let us take the inspiration of extraordinary people, extraordinary women pioneers, Rabbi Prezand, Rachel Strugatsky, Rabbi Richman, and the author of that story from the forward. Let me share with you her name so that she is acknowledged properly. Helen Shervitz. Remarkable women, not mentioned in the Parsha, but that's okay. Amazing men and women who have looked at the numbers and not despaired, who have kept going in the wilderness, knowing in their heart of hearts that we may yet come to a promised land. Let us keep marching together. Shabbat shalom.